nothing is good or bad, right or wrong, until we compare it to something else. And this applies to happiness as well. My happiness compared to someone else's might be bigger or smaller, but their happiness might be bigger or smaller compared to someone else's. What are we comparing it to? And how does that affect our ability to live our highest and best life? I'm Amira Alvarez. I am the founder and CEO of The Unstoppable Woman. We are a global coaching company where we help extraordinarily passionate, ambitious women take their lives and their businesses to the next level. So we work both on the business side, but also in who you're being and what kind of life you are creating. So today we are talking about this concept of happiness as relativity and relative happiness. So what happens if someone doesn't want to be happy? Like, what does that even mean? Or that their happiness doesn't look like your happiness. It looks different. What do you do with that? So let me give you a few four examples of what this might look like so that you can spot it in the world. So it might look like someone constantly, continuously being in a habitual pattern of disappointment, or they're happy complaining, or they're happy blaming, or they're happy being a victim, or they're happy being a troll on the internet. Like, think about that. There are trolls on the internet. There are people who get off on, you know, attacking others. There's some level of happiness for them in that. Now, does that mean that they feel good? No, they're probably in a negative vibration, but they are content in some fashion with that. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Okay. Sometimes people are even happy being vindictive. And I, I want to restate the last thing that I just said. Someone can be discontent, not have an overall happy life, but be satisfied or content in their behavior because it is their conditioned self. It's what they know. It's it's an itch that's being scratched. And if they don't scratch that itch, they don't feel like themselves. To feel like themselves, I'm going to put that in quotes and say that feels good, even though they probably are not feeling particularly good. They probably are living at a level of struggle, hardship, and just overall low vibration. Now, how do I know this? How do I know this? Well, because I'm not always at a high vibration. Now, my high, my vibration now is much higher than it has been historically, certainly in my growing up, all of that. And yet, I can tell you that there are days where I am or moments where I am in a complaint and I'm not at a high vibration. This is called being human. This is humaning. And yet we don't want to let ourselves off the hook on this because that's not going to give us what we want, which is the exquisite life, which is that luscious feeling of feeling lit up in love with life in awe of all that we get to experience, feeling fully connected, whole, complete, just your heart expanded and totally in love with your life. How do we change this and what do we do about this and what does this all mean? We, we've all done this, okay? No one's off the hook here. We've all done this. And think about some of the places where you may be doing this, complaining about work, complaining about being overwhelmed, complaining about not having enough time or being late, or or maybe complaining about how someone else is behaving or judging or or someone else and criticizing them. Or you might think about how you're criticizing and judging yourself. Maybe you're you're criticizing how you've approached your your relationship or how you're approaching your body or your health or your level of organization and there's there's a criticism going on in your head. These are set points. These are common patterns that create a set point of happiness for us or or a level of vibration. And we get in a habitual pattern of thought. And it's comfortable. It's the known. It's what you've been doing for the last 10 years, the last 20 years, the last 30 years. It's it's a habitual way of being, a conditioned way of being. It's the way of being that your body 
demands the the chemicals of of dopamine and serotonin and all of that demand that you do these things to get that hit and yet is it really making you happy so i'm using happy in two ways here there's the happy like the comfortable happy the known happy the um i'm scratching that itch it's the itch happy versus true happiness where you're actually feeling a a high vibration and feeling lit up about your life so it's not really happy okay you don't feel particularly happy and good when you are complaining or moaning and groaning but there's something satisfying to the the habitual you in that okay and this is the challenge okay we wonder why we're unhappy um or someone else is unhappy but we're not looking at our habitual thinking our habitual way of being okay we're stuck in these habitual behavior patterns all of us that lead to a lower set point okay a lower vibration and yet it feels like the correct way to use our mind and to 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 use our time um i'm going to put out there that it's that it's it's not leading you to where you want to go it doesn't make you wrong or bad that that is a level of criticism that's going to keep you stuck in that loop but you do need to change it in order to get a different result so cause and effect here my experience is that it's easier to see these things in others than it is initially to see it in ourselves we're very good at spotting it in others look at how they're complaining look at how they're unhappy look at how uh, they're they're a miserable human or wow they're stuck in a victim mentality or wow she's being so vindictive and it's very easy to see it out there and and less easy to see when you're doing it yourself so i'm going to give you an example from from my life so i just had a conversation with the man of uh the love of my life man of my dreams amazing human generally 99.9% of the time super high vibe right super positive ready to to like live life at its fullest and in this conversation though he was not in that place now was he super 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 bottom of the vibration level no absolutely not okay but he was kind of bitching and moaning about some things and i didn't want to go down to that vibration and so i was frustrated in that conversation not significantly i think i handled it and i give myself a little pat on the back i think i handled it pretty well but i was focused on what he was doing and in that there was a complaint in my head look he's being like this he's not showing up the way he needs to show up i was in a little bit oh look matching that complaining okay and that i didn't see until later okay but this process that i'm taking you through is part of part of this okay so it, it's part and parcel of this when you see it in someone else right then take a moment cuz we live in a vibrationally matching universe think oh how am i showing up like this and see if you can notice it in yourself now this is a classic a uh, strategy like turn the mirror on yourself and and we've we most of us have learned that but can you do that on the field of play consistently okay can you hold yourself to a higher standard and do that all the time okay so it's it's a useful way when you see it in others instead of making yourself wrong for for just looking at others right when you recognize the pattern of behavior in another person and then make the decision around you know is this what i'm doing too build the awareness let's say build the awareness is this what i'm doing too where is my vibration what do i can i stay in the room the proverbial room and keep my vibration where i want it or am i going to be dropping down and i need to remove myself gracefully and with graciousness can you leave the room the proverbial room whether that's on the phone or in the restaurant or whatever 
if you need to, okay? And the choice of staying in the, the room or leaving the room is more challenging than you probably recognize because there are all sorts of relationship issues that work with that, that, that get mixed up in it. You know, I don't want to hurt his feelings or I don't want her to feel abandoned or I don't want um, them to think that I'm better than they are, right? There's, there's all sorts of stuff that comes up because of our fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of not belonging, all sorts of things, losing love. And, and we have to be cognizant of that. And yet you need to put yourself first. Okay. So you have a choice in these moments. This is the real thing that I want to say, the point that I want to make. You have a choice. You don't have to stay in your habitual set point or pattern but it requires you not to go down to their level, okay? It requires you not to go down to your own set point, okay? You have to keep yourself high, even in the face of what looks like a choice for unhappiness, okay? So this noticing in others requires you to notice what's happening in yourself as well. Okay. So whenever you start, here's here's the trick or the the cue on this. Whenever you start to judge someone else, right? There's a thought in your head that says, "Oh, they're being like this. I don't like this." That's a judgment and a criticism. Stop right there. That's the trigger. That's the cue. Stop right there. Oh. Ah. What am I doing? Oh, I'm doing the same freaking thing. Amazing. Look at that awareness. Okay? And then you have to make a choice not to do that. And that's that's often like turning the Titanic because you really want to complain about how they're not showing up the way you want them to show up because that's where you're at, okay? So you might be feeling better in comparison to them. Your complaint might be a lighter complaint or a lighter level of unhappiness than theirs, but you're still doing that. And there is someone else who would look at you and go, why does she want to be so unhappy? Why does she consistently choose the, this way of being, this kind of thinking and being unhappy like that? Okay. So that might be a little bit of an ouch, right? Mm. Like someone, someone's judging me. Mm. Okay. But you have to, you have to recognize that. You have to recognize that. So a few more examples of how this might come up you could be getting into right, wrong argument in your head. It's not right that they do this. That's wrong that they're behaving like this. Or justification conversations, right? Raise your hand if if, if you're having a conversation in your head trying to justify something in relationship to someone else. We have all these conversations and like, that's a cue, right? That's a trigger. Oh, look, if I'm in a justification, I am doing what I am saying is creating an unhappy life. I am being that person. Ah, face palm, right? So there's complaining about them complaining. We talked about that. Blaming them, pointing out, even if you feel very evolved and you're uh, you're working really diligently not to go down to their level, but you're still pointing out how or what they're doing, right? there's a little bit of a complaint there, a little bit of a judgment, okay? So you must make a different choice, okay? When they go low, we go high, right? So what does that actually look like on the field of play? Well, sometimes it looks like changing the subject. Sometimes it looks like talking about something else. Sometimes it looks like asking a question that diverts the the conversation. Sometimes it, it looks like just not engaging in that, Okay. Sometimes it looks like getting off the phone or ending the conversation. Sometimes it looks like, okay, babe, let's let's bitch in a box, right? Let's let's take 10 minutes, five minutes, and then complain. But after that time, time's up, then we're gonna shift our energy and attention. Now there's a challenge here because that's got some momentum if you're 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 in a complain mode for five or ten minutes. 
then you have to find a strategy for finding better thoughts to, to move the spiral, the momentum up and the thinking up. Okay. So if you find yourself that person, if you find yourself being the person who's not as happy as she wants to be, and trust me, I've been that person many times in my life. And then you have to figure out, okay, well, I can't get to feeling great from being in a crappy mood. Uh, let me say that differently. I can't expect to be be happy feeling great if I'm feeling crappy, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, if I'm feeling disappointed or not enough, if I'm in blame or victim. I can't think that if I'm vibrating at that level, that I'm going to match to happy. Okay. And this is happy with capital H, not happy in quotations, meaning the conditioned self kind of happy. Okay. And yet, you have conditioning, you have a way of being that's saying, I might not like this feeling, but I'm happy or I'm comfortable in this this feeling. So you can't get there from the place you don't want to be. You have to get to where you want to be from the vibrational frequency of being there. Okay. You have to be a vibrational match for that which you desire. Okay. So if you are vibrating at overwhelm and you want spaciousness, you have to get to spaciousness in order to call in the things in life and the experience of being spacious. Now, this seems a little bit like circular thinking. Like, how do you get there if you're not there? Right. If I have to be there before I have the experience, how do I get there? Then I would be having the experience. What, how, what, what's the way out? How do we do this? And this is where imagination comes in. This is one of the most powerful mental faculties that you have, because what it does is it allows you from the place you are now to imagine where you want to be. And we all have a powerful imagination and you can imagine how you want to feel, what you would be saying, what you want to do. If you take the time to start imagining that, your subconscious doesn't know the difference between whether you are truly experiencing it or just imagining it. And your body doesn't know the difference either. You will start feeling better, feeling better in your body because we feel in our body. You will start feeling better when you're imagining something else because you start thinking that it's happening. Okay. So imagination is a super incredibly powerful tool. It's how we get to the level of vibration of that which we desire and then we become a match to it. So when you're asking the question how can how can someone want to be unhappy, right? How can you know what what is going on there that you're going to go oh look, that's me in judgment. Let's turn it around on myself. I'm going to use that to move to a higher vibration as a trigger to trigger me to move to a higher vibration and then I will feel better. You stack moments upon moments of feeling better and you get a great day. You stack days after days of feeling better, feeling happy. You get a happy life. You get to build your exquisite life just how you want it. Okay. And that's what gets to happen for us if we apply our drive, our desire, and our discipline towards this versus ignoring it and hoping, wishing that it just changes, okay? If we use our will, right, our ability to focus, our unstoppableness, if you will, towards changing ourselves inside and our set points, we become the person we want to be, okay, and truly know ourselves as when we stop and think, this is who I am, but why am I behaving like this? Okay. And and so we do this again and again and again every day. This is a process. This is a this is a series of choices that you you make every day. Sometimes it's not easy, right? Sometimes it's like turning the Titanic around. We want to be outraged. We want to be in the giant complaint. We want to commiserate with someone. That's how we know that we're connected. We're commiserating with someone and you don't want to commiserate with them. Okay. That might be time time to leave the room, so to speak. 
So for today, the salient questions to ask is, is this who I want to be? Like when you're noticing that, you know, oh, that person doesn't want to be happy. They're in a bad mood. They're, they're not feeling so great. Is this the person I want to be who's who's judging that and staying in that? Okay. Now there's the difference between judgment and staying in it and and repeating it and being aware of it and just looking the other way. There's lots of things that we don't give our energy to, but if you're giving your energy to it, if you're hooked by it, that's that's a great cue for you to look inside. Okay. And is this truly making me happy to have this conversation about this other person? Or is it just a habitual judgment? Okay. So those are the kinds of questions I want you to be asking yourself to bring a level of awareness to your life so that you can make better choices and change. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing, for liking, for sharing. We appreciate all of that. It helps us get this message out to all the women and men who may really need to hear this, who are committed to having an unstoppable life and quite frankly, an exquisite life. So I hope you have an amazing day. I'm Amira Alvarez. I'm the founder and CEO of The Unstoppable Woman and I'll catch you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.